Welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm going to be reviewing the Jordan River, but this review is going to be a little different than my previous reviews, because instead of you listening to this disembodied voice, you actually get to see me talk in the video. Hi, everybody. And the reason is, I'm going to be sharing my testimony as to why I got rebaptized when I went to the Jordan River. But before we get there, let's get this one thing out of the way. The site where I got baptized is not the traditional site where Jesus would have been baptized. Here, where I am on this day, is at the Yardnet Baptismal Site, just south of the Sea of Galilee, where Jesus was most likely baptized, will be closer to Jericho and just north of the Dead Sea. The Jordan River is mentioned in the Bible almost 200 times, so this review will consist of most of the highlights from Scripture featuring the Jordan River. In Joshua chapter 3, verse 15 and 16, we see Joshua and the children of Israel cross the parted Jordan River into the Promised Land. Now, what might be surprising to some is this is not the last time the Jordan River was parted. In 2 Kings chapter 2, verses 6 through 8, the Jordan River parts a second time, this one for Elijah, right before God took him away into heaven. And in a few verses later, in 2 Kings chapter 2, verses 11 through 14, the Jordan River parts a third time when Elisha crossed back over the river after God took Elisha away. In 2 Kings chapter 5, we find the story of the Syrian commander Naaman, who was riddled with leprosy. He went to Elisha to be healed, and Elisha told him to be dunked seven times into the Jordan River to be cured from his leprosy. Naaman refused at first because the water was very muddy, but he eventually obeyed and was healed. And in the following chapter, in 2 Kings chapter 6, verses 2-7, through 7, a man lost an axe head into the Jordan, and Elisha caused it to float so that it could be retrieved. And most famously, in Matthew chapter 3, verse 13-17, through 17, Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist. Now, this was not done out of Jesus needing to repent for his sins, because he was obviously without sin, but to set an example for us to follow and to fulfill all righteousness. Now, Let's dive into why I felt led to get baptized a second time in my life. Now, please understand, this has nothing to do with getting saved again. I think the Bible is very clear that salvation is a gift. You cannot earn it. And if you cannot earn it, you cannot lose it. See what Jesus says here in John chapter 10, verses 27 through 30. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all, and no one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and the Father are one. So I was saved when I was around six or seven years old, got baptized, and in the next 38, 39 years of my life was sort of like a spiritual roller coaster where there was moments where I was super close to God doing the right thing, and then there was moments where I was super far away from God doing my own thing. But the thing that I learned over and over and over again is God is faithful in restoring us when we repent. When I turn from my selfish ways, when I turn from my, my sins, that he restores. I fail, he restores. And that's the beautiful thing about the God we serve. Now, for years, I've always felt a desire to get rebaptized. Didn't know what it would look like, didn't know when it would happen. And then when we planned on this trip for Israel and there was an opportunity to get baptized in the Jordan River, I said, this is, this is my moment. This is the time where I'm going to do it. And the reason is, I want to show my love for Jesus is still there after all these years. I want to show the world that after all these years, Jesus is still my Savior. And getting baptized has nothing to do with saving me from my sins. It's simply an act of obedience following what Jesus did when he was baptized. And baptism isn't a requirement for salvation. Look at the thief on the cross. Baptism is simply a sign showing that you choose Jesus and you're following him. When you get married, you put on a wedding ring. That symbolizes that you're married. But just wearing a wedding ring doesn't mean you're married. It's the commitment in your heart and the vows that you make with your mouth before God is what makes you married. Baptism is the same way. If your mama tells you to get baptized, or if your brother and your sister get baptized, or your friend gets baptized, and that's the reason you want to get baptized, then basically all you're doing is you're getting wet. You get baptized as an act of obedience because you've accepted Jesus as your Savior, 
and you're just following in his footsteps. Now, let me put it this way. You have a married couple who's been married for 20, 25, 30 years. What do they usually do? They renew their vows. You know, they're not getting remarried, but they're getting all their family and friends together and they're celebrating their love for each other after all those years. Well, that's the same thing with what I was doing when I got rebaptized. It's been 30 plus years since I got saved and got baptized the first time. And I just felt like it was the right thing to do to redeclare to the world, redeclare to Jesus my love and commitment to him. And that's mainly the reason why I got rebaptized. I know this is not a popular thing in our Western culture to get rebaptized again, but there's nothing wrong with it. I love Jesus, and this felt like the perfect time and the perfect place to basically recommit my focus and my love for Jesus and to tell the world that I'm a Christian. I hope this really makes sense. Well, this concludes my review of the Jordan River and my testimony as to why I chose to get baptized a second time. In my next review, I will be going over a large archaeological site, Bet Xi'an. But until next time, thank you for watching, and God bless.